Results for Designer, episode 239, Six Steps to Running a Design Business from Home. Welcome to the Resourceful Designer Podcast, offering solutions to streamline your graphic and web design business so you can get back to designing. And now, your host, his dog, Kira, was named after the major from Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Mark Descote. Yep, Major Kira Nerys. I had a bit of crush on her back in the day. Unfortunately, we had to get rid of Kira, the dog that is. She was a German Shepherd Border Collie mix, and for some reason my son started getting very severe allergic reactions to her, which was kind of weird because we had other dogs and he never had a problem with any of them. They were Shelties. So we had Kira for only a short time and had to get rid of her. Oh well. In this episode of the podcast, I'm going to tell you what you need in order to run a successful business from home. I'm also going to share a tip that you may find useful in dealing with the plethora of browser tabs you may have open. Now, what have I been up to? Well, it's been a slow week for me here. I'm recording this on, actually, it's Black Friday today as I'm recording this in the US, which also translates to Black Friday here in Canada. And because it's the Thanksgiving week in the U.S. and the majority of my clients are U.S. based, I haven't really had much work this week or new work or dealing with clients. I did have a couple of podcast artworks to do that just so happened to be Canadian clients. So I did do her artwork this week and got her approval on that. But I'm waiting for a lot of other stuff, approvals and such from clients that are just off this week because of the Thanksgiving week in the U.S., But I spent a lot of time just doing some uh, personal stuff, cleaning up some folders. I went through some fonts. I had some corrupted fonts from years ago that I just decided instead of trying to fix or trying to, to find replacements, I just got rid of them, cleaned up my desktop a little bit, cleaned my office a little bit. Not enough by looking around here. It's still a little bit of a mess, but I did tidy it up a bit and got some bookkeeping taken care of. So not a whole lot done on the design aspect of it but I'm still happy with the other stuff I got done this week. And it's funny, even the resourceful designer community was a little slow this week because the majority of people in there are from the U.S. as well. So a lot of them had prep work to do for Thanksgiving, and of course, Thursday and Friday, not a lot of chatter going on in the community this week. But I can understand, Thanksgiving's a big thing. Here in Canada, we have ours back in October, and it was great, so I wish all the best to my American friends on theirs. But just a quick note, if you are interested in joining the Resourceful Designer community, right now, enrollment is closed, but it will open again in early 2021. And if you're interested, you can sign up by visiting resourcefuldesigner.com slash community. And I have several people on the waiting list already, and I would love for you to be a part of it as well. And now this week's tip of the week. Now this week's tip I presume works on Windows as well, but I'm going to state right up front that I have not tested it, nor that I look to see that it does, but I think it does, and that's Chrome application shortcuts. Now, I'm sure there was ways to do these with other browsers, but I just did it with Chrome because that's my default browser these days. And what these are is Chrome allows you to create a desktop application from any website, any web page that you're on. Now, the reason this is important is for certain things, like say you use a billing software that's browser-based, so you don't actually have an application on your computer, you have to log into a browser, which is my case. I just set up recently a new software called Easy Billing 360. I just finished setting it all up as my billing, my invoicing platform, but it's browser-based, which means I have to open up a web browser and go to that site in order to access it, or... The big issue is maybe I already have it open and it's one of the 50 or 100 browsers I have uh, open or tabs and it's a matter of finding which tab is it, where is it, and and it's real pain. So I have Easy Billings 360 that I do that. I also have a software called Plutio that I use to manage all my projects now. It's a digital thing. Again, it's browser-based. Well, before, as I said, I used to have problems because I'd have to try to find the browser tab or sometimes just open a new one. And next thing you know, I had it open in multiple tabs. Well, I found out that Chrome application shortcuts 
allows you to create an application, a desktop application from any website. What you do is you open the, the site in a browser window, then on the right-hand side, all the way to the end, even with the URL bar where the address is, all the way to the end, there's the three vertical dots. You click on that, you go down to More Tools, and then there's an option called Create Shortcuts. When you create shortcuts, a window pops up and it lets you name it. So whatever you want to name it, it's usually the name of the web page, but you may want to shorten it to something like in my case, Plutio or Easy Billings 360. And this is the important thing. You want to check the box that says open as window. And then you create. And what it does is this actually adds an application to the Chrome apps folder in your application folder on your computer. So if you go on your Mac to your applications folder where all your programs are, you should find one that's a folder in there called Chrome Apps. And in there, you'll find stuff like Gmail and uh, mine has YouTube and some other stuff. And whichever one you create will now be in there. Well, that is now, if you look, get info on that, it says it's an application. So you can create an alias of it, put it somewhere. You can drag it down to your dock. And when you click on it, it opens up that web page as if it was an application. So it doesn't look like it's in a web browser. It looks like it's a standalone application. In fact, even at the top left of your screen, where normally it says Finder, and if you're in Chrome, it says Chrome. Well, for example, when I open the Plutio app, it now says Plutio up there. And what's even best about this is I can use the, I forget what it's called on the Mac, I think it's a Control Center, that allows you to switch between applications by using the control tab on your keyboard, and it'll switch between the open applications. Hey everyone, Future Mark here. I'm in the middle of editing the episode and I just noticed that I said control tab when I meant to say command tab. So not as not to confuse you, the key command in order to switch between applications is actually command tab. Now back to your regular scheduled program. Well, before, when I was using Plutio or Easy Building 360 in a browser tab, it would just show Chrome and whatever Chrome tab was in front would be the one it would go to. Well, now as a standalone application, I can switch directly to Plutio or directly to Easy Buildings 360 or any other ones that I create. So this is something, I don't know if I was ever aware of it, but I never actually used it until just earlier this week. And when I did, I said, I have to share this on the podcast because this is such a useful tip. Now I no longer have to go digging or open up and wait for the page to load. I have the icon in my dock that I can open it and I can easily switch between it and my current application by using the control tab on my keyboard. So that's Chrome application shortcuts. And if, you're, if you didn't quite follow that, you can either rewind and re-listen to what I said or visit the show notes of this episode which is resourcefuldesigner.com slash episode 239. And I'll have it all written out there on how to do it. So that's this week's tip of the week. And now, six steps to running a design business from home. If there's one positive takeaway from the 2020 pandemic, it's that a lot of people got to experience what it's like to work from home. Now, some realized right away that it's just not for them. They need people around them. They need to socialize. They need an office environment in order to be productive. While others, they got a taste of what being a home-based designer, or I, even though I hate the term, a freelancer, is like. And you know what? They liked it. But in order to do this full-time on a permanent basis, you need to know what you're getting into. Because some designers think that this is the easy life and that once you set up your own design business, new clients and new projects will just flow in. But that's not how it works. This is not field of dreams. Just because you build it does not guarantee that they will come. Running a successful design business takes more than design skills. For your business to succeed, you need skills in business development, in lead generation, in marketing, in communication, in leadership for you to be able to work properly with your team, and of course, in sales. 
being a designer and owning a design business are two completely different things. So how do you make the most of it? How do you set yourself up for success? How do you ensure that you can sustain this lifestyle? Because that's what it is. It's a lifestyle. How do you ensure that you can sustain it long term? Easy. You need a plan. How does that saying go? By failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail? So prepare yourself. Because chances are, it's going to be a rocky start. So how do you do it right? Step one, create an environment you're comfortable in. The first step in feeling like you're running a home-based business is to treat your working space as your business space. Having a place in your dwelling where you can transition from home life to business life is the key here. If you have a separate room that you can designate as your office, all the better. That's great. That's what I have. But if that's not the case, maybe where you live just doesn't have the space for that. Pick a corner and set it up to be your working environment. Get a good office chair. Set up your computer so that it's ergonomically comfortable to work at for long periods of time. And then fill that corner, fill that space with everything you need to work productively. The key here is the more the space feels like a working space, the more productive you'll be in your business. Now, step number two, keep your overhead to a minimum. Everyone dreams of making big bucks and living the dream while working for yourself. But that's not the way you should be thinking. Remember, it's not how much money you make that's important. It's how much money you keep and what you do with that money, especially when you're just starting out. So even though I said a good office chair is something you should get, it's very important. I don't want you to go spend $1,000 on a good chair if you don't have $1,000 to spend. Overhead is the key here. You want to keep your expenses to an absolute minimum so that you can benefit more from the money that you are making while designing. A wise man once said, you can save 100% by choosing not to buy something. So even though in the past I've, I've mentioned I'm a big proponent of things such as lifetime deals for software and that, it's only a deal if you're going to get enough use from it to cover the cost of the deal. Just because something's on sale, and this is especially important today, I'm recording this on Black Friday, just because something is on sale doesn't mean you have to buy it, especially when you're just starting out. Be very careful what you spend on your business. There'll be time later to upgrade when you're more financially secure. Step number three, work on your business, not in your business. One of the biggest mistakes that freelance designers make is focusing all of their time and all of their energy on the projects they do for their clients. Now, yes, you do want to give 100% to your clients, but that 100% doesn't have to mean all of your time. There's a big difference between working in your business and working on your business. It's essential that you make time to work on the aspects of your business as well in order for your business to grow. Things such as your finances, so that you can make sure you're keeping overhead low and doing the most with the money you're earning. And there's your marketing plan to figure out how you're going to get new clients, how you're going to reach out to them, what sort of image are you going to put forward. There's also all the processes and all the systems that you need to develop for your business to succeed. Those are things that only you can do, but you need to spend the time doing them. How are you going to go about handling things? What's your process going to be? How are you going to communicate with your clients? How are you going to communicate with your team members? And you will need team members to communicate with. How are you going to organize all the assets you're going to collect? And there will be a lot of them. All of these are things you need to think of that are beyond designing stuff for your clients. And don't forget goals. Goals are your destination. They're where you want to be a year from now, two years, five years from now. Without goals, there's no way for you to measure if your business is succeeding or not. 
you can't just measure the money that's coming in. There has to be other factors taken into consideration in order to determine if your business is successful. Just because you're an office of one person and that you're making money from a few clients, don't think you can avoid treating what you do as a business. And for any business to succeed, it needs to evolve with the times. So schedule the time to work on your business and not just in your business. Step four, be proud of your home-based business. Never shy away from the fact that you're working from home. There may have been a time when working from home was looked down upon, frowned upon, but not anymore. Right now, it's the end of 2020. And if there's anything this year has taught us, it's that working from home is a viable option. It no longer has the negative stigma it once had associated with it. In fact, many people will be envious of you now when you say you're working from home. The same can't be said several years ago. But nowadays, it's perfectly normal. And that's the key point here. You should take the attitude that you are working from home. Not working at home, you're working from home. There is a difference. Remember, you're running a business. A business just like every other brick and mortar business out there. When you drive through town and you see all these stores, your business is no different. It just so happens that your business is situated in the same location that you call home. And that's why you have to take that attitude that you're working from home. You're not working at home. There is a difference. Now, step number five, look the part. Just because you're working from home is not an excuse to look unprofessional. How you present yourself, how you present your business is vitally important to your success. I'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy, and there are days where I just don't feel like shaving. But anytime that I'm meeting with a client, whether it's in person or virtually, I make sure to look presentable. I dress up. I shave, I make sure that I look okay because I want to come off as the professional person that I'm trying to portray to my clients. If you present yourself as the starving artist, your clients won't take you seriously and you'll never be able to charge them the prices that you truly deserve to be earning. So look professional. And if you need, an actual business environment to meet with clients if you can't go to their office and your home is not the place you want to invite them to? Look into daily office or maybe daily conference room rentals at a local co-working space. A lot of cities have them popping up. For a small fee, you could rent a room for an hour and meet with the client there and look professional. Now, of course, looking professional also applies to all your visual branding your logo, your website, your social media, and all of that. But you're a designer. I shouldn't have to tell you the importance of a good brand and how it it can affect a business. Just remember, all the work that you do for your clients, the same applies to you and your business as well. I know it's hard as designers to do our own work, but you got to make the effort to look professional. And step number six, be honest with yourself. Everything I said may be well and good, but You have to be honest with yourself before you get too far down this path of working from home. Not everyone is suited to work from home. Nobody knows you better than you know yourself. Do you have the work habits required to do this alone? Do you have the discipline to work unsupervised and not be distracted by the things around you? Hmm, I wonder what's on Netflix today. Do you have the time management skills? To make sure you meet deadlines and you get things done on time? Can you remain happy and motivated after doing this for months and years on end? Are you capable of dealing with the isolation of being alone every day? That last one is very important. Isolation can lead to depression, which can lead to poor working habits, which can lead to bad business decisions which, if left unchecked, can result in a failed business and possibly even bankruptcy. 
So you have to know whether or not you can deal with the isolation of working all by yourself every day. And to help you with that, you should find something to help with the isolation. Join groups, join communities, join clubs, something that will help combat that isolation. The resourceful designer community is a great place for this. A lot of people have joined because they wanted that camaraderie. They wanted somebody they can talk to, even if it's just typing a message or getting together once a week via video chat. So find something. Find local groups where you can interact in person once we're allowed to interact with people again. And not only will these activities aid in your mental mindset, they'll help improve your social skills, but they can also enhance your business and quality of life significantly. And they're a great way to combat the isolation. So there you have it. Six steps to running a business from home. I want you to think it out before you actually try it. And if you've already taken the plunge and you're already running your business from home, make sure that you have everything in place to ensure your success. A goal without a plan is just a wish. And the last time I checked, a wish doesn't put food on the table. So how much time did you spend thinking about all the different parts of running a home-based design business? Let me know. Leave me a comment for this episode at resourcefuldesigner.com slash episode 239. And before I go, I just want to remind you once again of the tip of the week, which is Chrome application shortcuts, an easy way to create a quote unquote application from any browser tab or browser window that acts just like a regular application and makes it so much easier to access things such as billing or client management software or anything like that. So I gave the instructions earlier, but if you're interested Visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash episode 239, where I will have the instructions written out there for you to see. And also, as I mentioned, if you want to help with the isolation or you just want to talk with some fellow designers, get some ideas, or just be part of a community of like-minded designers who are interested in growing their business, sign up now to be notified once enrollment to the Resourceful Designer community opens up again in 2021. And you can do that by visiting resourcefuldesigner.com slash community. So thank you very much. I am Mark Decote, wishing you all the best with your home-based design business. And as I do every episode, I want to remind you to stay creative. Thanks for listening to the Resourceful Designer Podcast at resourcefuldesigner.com.